kind of nice that Ford are so concerned about the well-being of their employees. I wish the same could be said for <laughs> the producers at TransLogic. Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. It's no surprise that big car companies like Ford put their cars through some fairly rigorous testing prior to launch. Some of this testing really can beat the you-know-what out of them. Just so what they've done is come up with some nifty technology which has helped make the workplace a whole lot safer. Go to uh, Ford start toying around with using autonomous driving for the testing. We started this project in about 2011, and then we finally got to the point where the technology looked far enough along where we could attempt to do it for durability testing. But uh, the ergonomics of the people and the safety of our employees is really the primary driver for starting this project. In the previous process, where the human drivers drove the vehicle, it was a mix of events: some smooth roads, some rough roads, but on, a, on the, the truck procedures, we would typically limit them to about four hours just because of the content of the procedure. With a robot, obviously, it can run 24-7. It just has to come back to the building for inspections and fuel. So obviously, we get some time savings out of that, too. Right. We can call it a robot driver, but it's not a humanoid robot in the sense of the word. People always seem to picture that when we talk about robots. Yeah, that's correct. So we have a series of uh, actuators in the vehicle. The actuators are press on the brake, press on the accelerator, shift the vehicle, and then uh, we have a motor to turn the steering wheels. I'm heading out there now. I'm going to go and hop into the uh, F-150. I'll be riding shotgun today. And we're going to take you down the roads that uh, are not fit uh, or too difficult for our drivers <laughs> not, to do. Not fit for human <laughs> consumption, is that what you're going to say? <laughs> Always this certain sense of eeriness when you're in a vehicle that's driving by itself. So the Proving Grounds out here in Michigan, massive facility. It's like 4,000 acres, I believe it is. You can essentially have six F-150s running at any given time, just getting hours and hours of data, simulating what is essentially a lifetime worth of work in only, you know, a few months. And this is all being controlled in a control room by a technician about a mile and a half away, which I think is just incredible. This is the control room that we're sitting in right now. Test track emanates from here, but they have a, a radio network that lets us communicate with that, along with video cameras that allow yeah. us to see what's going on out there. From that control station, he's basically loading a planned path into the vehicle and a path that we've developed in advance. One of the first things I do whenever I hop into an automated vehicle is ask where the red button is. If you were in the car and anything went wrong at all, you would hit the red button, which is you know the emergency button or the, the e-stop button. That's just gonna jam on the brakes. You gotta come to a complete stop. Heading up on the pothole section now. It's kind of a shame that this car, <laughs> its life is gonna be spent here at the Proving Grounds. And it's just gonna get beat on for days and days and days at a time. We're going into the ripples now. Test out the shocks, see if anything's gonna come loose. Here we go on Silver Creek. This is the hardest part of the test right now. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Prior to being built, all of your cars, all of the components have been tested in a virtual environment. Right, so we test the components, subsystems, and then the vehicle, but we also test them virtually. So we're doing the, really the final step in the testing to ensure that when it goes out to the public, everything's been captured and corrected before we sell it to our customers. Virtual manufacturing, try to explain that to the person that doesn't really know or hasn't heard of that before. Sure. So manufacturing, of course, is assembling our, our vehicles, and now virtual manufacturing is doing it before actual real vehicles exist. We're very much concerned with the actual individual who puts the car together to make sure that they have the reach, the hand clearance, and the strength to put those parts together as, as the vehicle enters our workstation. So what we're going to do is identify issues, potentially, and what we want to do is identify those issues before we start making real parts. So as we flag concerns 
questions about, you know, high force to put a part together or maybe a long reach to grab a part or space that's too tight to get a hand in, we can identify those things and give the designers the information they need to change them before it's too late and too costly. So this is a, an optical motion capture system from Motion Analysis. Yep. It's 23 cameras that are hung on this truss structure and they illuminate everything within it using infrared light. And you have these markers that are attached to certain objects and they reflect that light and the cameras can track those markers. You've got a fake car, essentially, that's what this metal frame is representing. I put some markers on and then you can see my body move throughout the vehicle and how that's going to... That's right. So those markers will measure how your, your limbs move and that digital representation is actually a complex model that can predict how strong you would be in a given posture. All right, let's see how you're looking, Jonathan. All right, so there you are. Hey, Jonathan. Hey. There's a virtual Jonathan. There you go. <laughs> so this is the, so, so say this is a hose that you actually yeah. want to put on the car. Yep, as it'll well. measure the posture that you're in, and then we can use that posture to predict how strong you would be, you know, in that particular posture. So strong. Oh, oh your head. Technique. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> One of the other parts, I guess, uh, where it gets a little bit trickier is hand movement. But you yeah. came up with a solution. So a few years ago, we were tasked with leveraging 3D printing and manufacturing. So we started cubing out you know, the CAD uh, digitally and 3D printing volumes so that now we have a physical model that can represent that card that doesn't exist yet. But then we can actually put real hands in there and, and communicate to decision makers and to the assemblers what that new space would look like and obtain feedback. We can really prevent issues down the road. And the stats are showing we're seeing about 75% fewer uh, ergonomic-related injuries on the plant floor as well. So not only are we catching fewer issues when we yep. start making the prototype cars, but when it starts getting built on our plants, fewer operators are being injured. When we head down the autonomous path, a major concern is are we doing ourselves a disservice and putting all of ourselves out of work? Is that the case with this? Well, not really. It sort of just transitions the work from one group of people to another. So you're you know? going from it. Driving takes a lot of skill, but uh, working on uh, wiring and, and computer you know, and actuators, it's a different skill set than driving. So yep. there is opportunity for the, you know, the people that are driving to move into that role. Do you see uh, a future where workers down the track could end up wearing some kind of Oculus Rift headset, controlling robotic arms, building cars without even touching them? Yeah. You know, there's definitely been a lot of advancements in VR technology, but there is a lot of industrially um, sound sort of heads up displays with augmented reality. There's been a lot of uh, work in that realm over the, the past few years. So it's not, it's not out of this world that that could potentially help our, our, some of our folks in the plants. Well, it looks like Ford are taking the term rough day at the office and making it somewhat less literal using the latest technology. And I'm sure there's more than a few employees out there heaving a huge sigh of relief. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.